I am delighted now to invite this year's honorary degree recipient and keynote speaker to come forward. The child of Polish and Russian immigrants, Senator Bernie Sanders was born and raised in Brooklyn, not far from our campus, and he attended Brooklyn College. I think we're all familiar with Senator Sanders' extensive and influential political career thereafter. But what you might not know is that Senator's grassroots activism began right here at Brooklyn College, literally activism about the grassroots. In May of 1960, the young Bernie penned a letter to the student newspaper, The Kingsman, in which he declared, my purpose in writing is to protest the action of a school guard in ordering students off the campus grass. He explained, as a student at Brooklyn College, I appreciate the natural beauty of our campus in the midst of a large and crowded city. Therefore, I can well understand the administration's feelings that the grass would be prettier if left untrampled. Although that reasoning is valid, I am not quite certain that the sight of students stretched out and reading on the grass might not add a type of beauty to the school that is more important than pretty grass. I love this letter. It reveals something special about the young public servant. He sees beauty in students reading, relaxing, and enjoying the sun. He sees beauty in the quiet oasis that a college campus can provide in an otherwise noisy city. He sees beauty in people taking time to read, to reflect, to engage with ideas. And he seeks to protect the opportunity for reflection and public discourse over the petty rules of bureaucrats. So I want each of you graduates to think back to a time on the East Quad on a beautiful sunny day when you stretched out in red <laughs> under the majestic elms that frame that East Quad and I want you to thank Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Bernie Sanders has served as the mayor of Burlington, Vermont, a member of the United States House of Representatives, a mayor of the United and a member of the United States Senate. He's a leading voice, as you know, on income inequality, global warming, immigrants' rights, renewable energy, campaign finance reform, universal health care, civil rights, and civil liberties. He continues to value the beauty of students over tidy lawns, and we are deeply grateful for it. Senator Bernie Sanders, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which pertain thereto. Thank you. You know, and I know, that these are tough times for our country. But I do want to say that standing up here and looking out at the beautiful people in front of me, I have enormous confidence in the future of our country. Let me begin by congratulating the graduating class of 2017. Today is an important day in your lives, something that I know you have worked very hard to achieve. And I want to wish all of you the very best of luck in your future endeavors. May I not be strangled? <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what, that's it. Okay. See, not only do I think you have a right to read on the grass, I think speakers have a right not to have that stuff around their throats. But I do want, on behalf of my wife Jane and myself, to see and to pray that you all live healthy and happy lives, doing the work that you enjoy, surrounded in love by family and friends. 
And let me thank President Michelle Anderson, Nicole Haas, the Brooklyn College Administration, faculty and staff, and all of you for inviting Jane and me back to Brooklyn, where we were both born and raised. And I am very honored by the honorary degree you have given me. I grew up in Flatbush, and like Senator Schumer, graduated from James Madison High School. My wife Jane was also raised in Flatbush and Bedford-Stuyvesant and graduated from St. Xavier's High School a few miles away from here. In 1959, as a first-generation student, college student, I attended Brooklyn College for a year, a year which had a major impact on my life. After that year, I left for the University of Chicago where I eventually graduated. My mom had died the previous year, and I felt it was time to leave the neighborhood and see what the rest of the world looked like. My childhood in Brooklyn was shaped by two profound realities. First, my mom, dad, and older brother, who graduated from Brooklyn College, lived in a three-and-a-half-room rent-controlled apartment. As with many of your families who don't have a lot of money, financial pressure caused friction and tension within our household. From those experiences of growing up without a lot of money, I have never forgotten that there are millions of people throughout this country who struggle to put food on the table, pay the electric bill, try to save for their kids' education, or for retirement. People who, against great odds, are fighting today to live in dignity. The second reality that impacted my life was that my father left Poland at the age of 17 from a community which was not only very poor, but from a country where anti-Semitism, pogroms, and attacks on Jews were not uncommon. While my father emigrated to the United States and escaped Hitler and the Holocaust, many in his family did not. For them, racism, right-wing extremism, and ultra-nationalism were not political issues. They were issues of life and death, and some of them died horrific deaths. From that experience, what was indelibly stamped on my mind was the understanding that we must never allow demagogues to divide us up by race, by religion, by national origin, by gender, or sexual orientation. Black and white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, Christian, Jew, Muslim in every religion, straight or gay, male or female, we must stand together. This country belongs to all of us. As the United States Senator from Vermont, let me give you a very brief overview of some of the serious crises we currently face, crises which do not often get the attention they deserve, just are not talked about. As a student at James Madison High School many years ago, I recall my social studies teacher talking about how there were small developing countries around the world that were oligarchic societies, places where the economic and political life of the nation were controlled by a handful of very wealthy people. It never occurred to me as a kid in Brooklyn that the United States of America, our great nation, could move in that direction 
but that is precisely, in my view, what is happening today. Today in America, the top one-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Twenty, twenty Americans now own as much wealth as the bottom half of America, and one family now owns as much wealth as the bottom 42 percent of our people. In the last 17 years, while the middle class continues to decline, we have seen a tenfold increase in the number of billionaires. Today in America, CEOs are earning almost 300 times what the average worker makes. And in terms of income, while you and your parents are working, in some cases, two or three jobs, 52% of all new income generated today goes to the top 1%. Meanwhile, at the same time as we have more income and wealth inequality than any other nation, 43 million Americans live in poverty. Half of older workers have nothing in the bank as they approach retirement. And in some inner cities and rural communities, Youth unemployment is 20, 30, 40 percent. Unbelievably, in our country today, as a result of hopelessness and despair, we are seeing a decline in life expectancy. People are giving up, and they're turning to drugs, to alcohol, and even to suicide. And because of poverty and racism, Today, in a broken criminal justice system, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. And those people are disproportionately black, Latino, and Native Americans. Directly related to the oligarchic community that we currently have is a corrupt political system which is undermining American democracy, and it's important we talk about that and understand that. As a result of the disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, corporations and billionaires are able to spend unlimited sums of money on elections, and the result is today that a handful, a small number of billionaires are spending hundreds of millions of dollars every single year, often on ugly 30-second TV ads, helping to elect candidates who represent the wealthy and the powerful. And we are seeing the results of how oligarchy functions right now, right now in Congress, where the Republican leadership wants to throw 23 million Americans off of health insurance, cut Medicaid by over $800 billion, defund Planned Parenthood, cut food stamps and other nutrition programs by over $200 billion, cut Head Start and after-school programs and, by the way, make drastic cuts in Pell Grants and other programs that help working-class kids be able to go to college. And unbelievably, at exactly the same time as they are throwing people off of health care, making it harder for kids to go to college, they have the chutzpah to provide $300 billion in tax breaks to the top 1%. In other words, the very, very rich are getting richer, and they get tax breaks. The working class and the middle class are struggling, and they are seeing drastic cuts, life and death, in life and death programs, 
that could mean survival or not survival for those families. Now, in response to these very serious crises, it seems to me that we have two choices. First, we can throw up our hands in despair. We can say the system is rigged. I am not going to get involved. And that is understandable. But it is wrong. Because the issues that we deal with today, the economic issues, the social issues, the racial issues, the environmental issues, not only impact your lives, they impact the lives of future generations. And you do not have the moral right to turn your back on saving this planet and saving future generations. The truth is that the only rational choice we have, the only real response we can make is to stand up and fight back, reclaim American democracy, and create a government that works for all of us, not just the 1%. And for us to do that, it is necessary that we fight for a vision of a new America, an America based on progressive, humane values, not the values of the oligarchy. And what does that mean, briefly in concrete terms? It means that no, we are not going to throw 23 million Americans off the health care they have. We are going to bring about health care for all as a right, not a privilege. It means that no, we are not, as the current administration does, deny the reality of climate change. No, we are going to take on the fossil fuel industry, transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. It means, no, we're not going to cut Pell Grants and other student assistance. We are going to do what Germany, what Scandinavia, what countries all over the world do, and that is to make certain that public colleges and universities are tuition free and we're going to significantly lower student debt because we believe that anyone in America who has the ability and the desire should be able to get a higher education regardless of his or her income. And no, we're not going to do as the Attorney General of the United States now wants. We're not going to put more people in jail. We're going to fix a broken criminal justice system and invest in education and jobs for our young people, not more jails or incarceration. No, we're not going to defund Planned Parenthood. We're going to vigorously defend a woman's right to choose. My friends, let me conclude by saying this. We live in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. We are seeing an exploding technology which, if used well, has extraordinary potential to improve life. We are an intelligent and hardworking people. If we are prepared to stand together, if we take on greed and selfishness, if we refuse to allow demagogues to divide us up, there is no end to what the great people of our nation can accomplish. So today, as you graduate Brooklyn College, my message to you is very simple. Think big, not small, and help us create the nation that we all know we can become. Thank you all very much.